everyone welcome back to my channel today we are going to talk about January favorites and let's start with the most obvious change other than my room I have long hair I haven't had long hair in years and I wanted to try out the extensions because I wanted to see I wanted a change and I feel like it's a good change every time I look at myself in the mirror I get shocked because I'm not used to having long hair and it definitely changes up the look I went to a celebrity hair shop in Cheongdamdong called Edvi and they're actually really popular for doing hair extensions for a lot of idols and celebrities it took about two hours, but time went by so quickly because the stylist, he was so fun to talk to and he also shared some tips on how to take care of the extensions so I'll probably share that in another video in the future but yeah, this is my new hair and I wanted to include it in my favorites because um, it's been about a week now and I haven't really filmed a lot with it But now you guys will be seeing me with long hair for the next couple of months because this is supposed to last me two to three months now a lot of you guys have been asking if I got lip fillers or not and the answer is no I did not get lip fillers I feel like it would have been a lot more obvious if I got lip fillers and I'm pretty sure I would have vlogged it for you guys because I feel like um, a lot of you guys are curious about treatments in Korea such as skincare treatments like my laser treatment video and I for sure would have done a video on lip fillers if I decided to get them but no, I did not get them done I was kind of overwhelmed by all the comments and assumptions and how people truly believed that I got lip fillers when I didn't and I just kind of had to ignore them because it became really negative all of a sudden and I mean Honestly, if I got them or not, like that really shouldn't matter, but no, they're real. Like I didn't do anything to them. They're 100% natural, but I thought I would share how I have been treating them because it's been so dry here in Korea. In the morning, I like to start with the Fresh Sugar Lip Wonder Drops. This was a present from Eddie, and I really like how lightweight this is. And I feel like before applying makeup, if I use a thicker lip balm, I would have to use a wet wipe to remove it and then apply lipstick because it's just super sticky. But this is very lightweight, but it also moisturizes the lips and it exfoliates and I just feel like it's a great gentle treatment for the lips. Throughout the day, I like to use the Drunk Elephant Lip Balm. This is one of my favorites because of the formula. I love how my lips feel instantly moisturized and smooth after I use it. And this product is formulated with many different oils such as the popular virgin marula oil that is found in a lot of Drunk Elephant products, the avocado oil, the cranberry seed oil, and I forget the other major one. But all together, they all help moisturize, heal, hydrate the lips, and I'm just obsessed with this. At night, I like using Clavieu's Nourishing Care Lip Sleeping Pack. This won Soko Glam's Best of Beauty in 2018, and I could see why, because it really helps moisturize my lips. And that is key, especially during the dry winter season. And I feel like these three products all together might be the reason why my lips look more plump and hydrated and moisturized and healthy. And I really like the scent of this. It smells like vanilla very festive like Christmassy and I wake up to smooth lips and I'm surprised by how my lips will drink up all of it like no matter how thick of a layer I apply in the morning it's just smooth I've been using this every night and it's actually my favorite way to end my skincare routine but if you guys were curious about how I've been taking care of my lips these three products not fillers this this is it. Since we're on the topic of moisture, I want to talk about hand cream because I can't live without it right now. It's been so dry to the point where a slight scratch will turn into a scab 
and it's not pretty so i've been taking this one around with me every day this is the ease help um, hand balm and i got this one as a birthday gift from erin and i really like the scent it's very relaxing and i like taking this big one around because i love sharing it with all my friends so that corner of the cafe or restaurant will smell like this hand cream and it's just you just gotta share the wealth and you will all just enjoy it together and yeah so i've been taking this one around with me and i wanted to give it a shout out the final product i want to talk about is this deep sleep pillow spray from this works i picked this up with my mom in london and we were just very curious about this product because we both have a hard time falling asleep at night and once we wake up in the middle of the night we're both the type to like struggle to go back to sleep so we picked it up and surprisingly it works there's a blend of essential oils such as lavender vetiver i've actually have never heard of that before and wild chamomile and just seeing lavender and chamomile i just like knew that i had to test it out because those are two types of teas that i do drink before i go to bed and i read a lot of articles about how they help relax you so i was like let's give this a try the scent is super relaxing it kind of smells like the Aesop hand cream and maybe that's why i really like this um but my mom loves it my grandma loves it three generations we all really like how it helps relax us and it puts us in deep sleep moving on to books i have two that i want to talk about and the first is something that i have shared on my channel before and it is this one right here and it is the subtle art of not giving a f whether it's with school work social media i don't know something is occupying your mind right now and this book really helps put things into perspective and helps you think and prioritize different things and i really appreciated this the second time i read it even more because i was just reminded again and it was a great way to start off 2019 and the other book that i want to talk about is pachinko now this is one of the most intense books i have ever read in my life and i learned so much about korean history now i went to school in america and i learned world history and asian history and korea was always so small it was like a tiny paragraph in our history books and no matter how excited i got to learn about korea it was never extensive pachinko is a book about when japan colonized korea and how koreans lived during that time and a lot of them would move to japan thinking that they would have a better life but then they realized that they were just not accepted anywhere i cried many different times reading this because i compared it to my life as a second generation korean american and i also asked my parents about my grandparents i could probably do a dedicated video on pachinko because there's just so much to talk about um korean culture religion romance it's just there's so much going on and i was hooked on this the thickness of this book might intimidate you but i actually finished this in three days it was such an easy read i would stay up till like three o'clock in the morning just reading this i've been recommending this book to all of my friends and now i'm recommending it to you so please check it out and if you read it please let me know why you liked it i would love to read about your take on pachinko also, if you have any book recommendations, please comment down below because my goal this year is to read as much as I can and it felt so good to read books this month and I feel like I had that opportunity because I got my laser treatment and I couldn't really go outside the house and I spent a lot of me time and it was so necessary a lot of big YouTubers are actually changing up their upload schedules and I feel like YouTube has its trends and i felt like at one point in time it was more about quantity than quality and i feel like so many youtubers are burnt out and when i watched this video by casey neistat 
I related to it even though I'm not a big youtuber like PewDiePie or Casey Neistat and even Liza Koshy everyone deserves a break and I worked so hard and I know that since I started YouTube I consistently uploaded and at one point in time I was uploading 10 videos a week and then it went down to 7 to 5 and now I'm trying to upload two videos a week and slowly as I feel more confident maybe I will start vlogging again but I have to take a break in vlogging and I know a lot of you guys were curious about when Joan Day season 3 will start and I was very confident that I will start again but after taking this break and after vlogmas to be honest I realized that I just need to slow down a little bit. Joan Day, there was a formula. I knew what to film, how to film it, and how to edit it. And it was just very simple. And even though I liked sharing my life and I liked vlogging, um, I feel like after, I don't know, four or 500 videos, I just needed to take it easy. And I know so many of you guys are probably so shocked that I haven't been uploading on Joan Day in over a month um, but I just want you guys to know that it's mainly because I want to focus on me and when I am ready I will start sharing again so please be patient and I do appreciate everyone who left comments in my previous video about in my ASMR ASMR vlog um, a lot of you guys were happy to see me having lazy days again and little things like reading and taking more time on my edits because I don't have an editor that's another thing like I want to take control of my editing and when I actually shared to my management company about how I wanted to take a break from Joan Day they were like okay we'll get you an editor but I had to reject that because I wanted I don't want Joan Day to lose its personal touch and in order for me to make personalized videos again I need to be more personal to myself. So taking a break has been a favorite and kind of like this book, it's been helping me recharge and um, prioritize things differently. And um, I can't wait to share more contents with you guys this year. I mean, I'm not completely away from YouTube because I am focusing on my main channel, but for Joan Day, it's just going to park. We're going to take a little break and I will let you guys know when I am ready to start vlogging. Throughout Joan Day, I rarely watched television because I was focused on editing. And this month, or last month, in January, I actually watched a good amount. The first one is a Netflix show called You. This is quite a thriller because the guy is a creep, but in a very charming way. And he basically lures her to become his girlfriend and there are problems and he's still like controlling and you guys should definitely give it a watch if you like thrillers um and then there are two korean dramas that i watched the first one is a very obvious one it is sky castle and it's basically a story about insanely rich families trying to mold their children to become the best the top of the pyramid and i really enjoyed watching this because i'm very lucky that my parents were not this extreme and strict on me um if anything like i chose to go to have one or like after school programs if i wanted it but my mom and dad, they did not force me to go to Hagwans. But watching this made me feel very sad because it reminded me of the time when I taught English to uh, schools because the students, they would go to Hagwans till like 10 o'clock at night. And for me, when I was in elementary school, I would sleep at like 9 p.m. And I was kind of reminded about that. And it's a very critical take on the Korean education system. It's very unrealistic i hope there's a lot of family drama competition mystery murders and you just don't know what to expect with this and the acting is phenomenal i was so shocked by how talented the actors were and 
Even the children, they're so good at acting. But before Sky Castle, I started with Hwangwe Pumgyeok, which is The Last Empress in English. And this is a story about what Korea would be like in under a monarch system and uh, this is a very intense drama as well but unlike sky castle it's very cheesy but i would highly recommend it for people who are looking for a korean drama to watch um, but that's it for my january favorites i hope you guys enjoyed watching make sure to check the description box because at the end of it i will also be sharing my favorite songs and i will see you guys in my next video bye have a jonay